Welcome to module 7.0. In this lesson, you learn about sloped steelwork and how to create rafters. You may need to use sloping steelwork to define a roof or perhaps a sloped facade on a high rise building. Revit has several tools to make the modeling and editing of sloped steelwork simple. In module six, we looked at structural framing that was predominantly flat and level. Of course, most building structures would at some point require steelwork to be placed on a sloped plane and have bracing members that are set out on inclined planes that can form compound angles. In this module, we will focus on the placement and control of sloped structural steelwork. When placing steelwork on inclined planes, it's essential that you make use of named reference planes that can define work planes. Reference planes can be used to set out roofing steels and steelwork can either be placed normal or vertical to that plane. Go ahead and open up Project A. The model opens up in the 3D view. In this video, we're going to focus in on the creation of rafters on the roof. We'll also take a look at reference planes and how to use that to control the steelwork. Let's first open up the structural plan 00 ground. In the project browser, double click on 00 ground floor. To begin, we're going to create a section that's going to elevate grid six. Go ahead and select the view ribbon and on the view ribbon, select section. We'll create a section from the bottom to the top. This way, the section will look to the left hand side. Don't forget that you can hold down the shift key to make the object orthogonal. We just want to elevate grid six, so we're going to change the depth of the section. I'm just going to use the shape handle here just to drag that section back. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at that section. I'm not going to worry about naming this. This is just a temporary section. To open up the section in the project browser, we can just simply double click on section two. To begin here, we're going to create a new level and extend up the grids. So I'm just going to change the crop box. And then we'll select one of the grids. And we'll use the drag handle here just to extend those grids up. We'll now create an additional level. To do this, we can select the structure ribbon. And on the structure ribbon on the right hand side, we can select level. Or of course, you can use LL for the shortcut key. This particular level wants to be four meters higher than the third floor. So we'll place in the level from the left to the right and we'll sketch that level in. And here we'll change the temporary dimension to four meters. I'm also going to name this level. So we'll select where it says level seven at the minute. And here this will be 04 hyphen roof. And we'll say yes here to rename the corresponding views. Notice now in the project browser, we now have a new structural plane 04 roof. We'll now create a reference plane with a three degree slope, which is where we'll set out our steelwork. To do this, we'll select the structure ribbon. On the structure ribbon, we can select ref plane. We can also use the keyboard shortcut RP. We'll select this intersection here between grid A and also the roof level. And here I'll sketch in my reference plane. To set an accurate angle, notice on the context ribbon, I can go to the pull down here and here we can select angular dimension and we'll place a dimension between the reference plane and 04 roof. You can see currently this is 2.5 degrees. So we release the dimension command by selecting modify and then I can select the reference plane and here we'll make this three degrees. Notice that the reference plane will pivot from the intersection of grid A and the roof level. Okay, so we now have the reference plane at the correct angle. Let's now give this a name. This is very important step. So here we'll just simply call this one roof. So we're now ready to create our first rafter. On the structure ribbon, go ahead and select beam. Notice as soon as you click the beam tool in a section or an elevation view, Revit needs to understand the work plane that this beam will be placed on. If we go to the pull down menu here, you can see that we can select things like grids, levels, and also named reference planes. In this example here, we want this first rafter to be positioned on grid six. So we'll select grid six and select okay. In the properties palette in the type selector, let's ensure here that we're using our section size UB4571267 and we'll now go ahead and create our rafter. To do this, I'm going to start from the left hand side here and I'm going to select the intersection between grid E and my reference plane and then also here the intersection between grid A and the reference plane. As soon as I place this out, you can see that we have our rafter created. 
Now in this particular view, if I go ahead and select chain from the options bar, I can then create any combination of beam I want. And you'll notice as I do this, the beams are then mitered. And of course, all this framing will then be positioned on grid six. Just to take a look at this, I'm gonna press the escape key a few times, go to the 3D view. And if I orbit and rotate the model round, you can now see our rafter, but also that crank steel work that I created. Okay, let's just delete the crank steel work. So I'll use the tab key there to select the loop and press delete. What I want to do now is copy that rafter back through the structure. To do this, I can go ahead and open up the 04 roof plan. Now notice as I open this up, I can only see the horizontal grids. That's because the vertical grids aren't cutting through that level. So to do this, we'll go ahead and open up the south elevation. And indeed here, I can see that the grids aren't high enough. So we'll elevate those so that they're now cutting through the level for the roof. We'll go back to our roof plane. And now we can see that plane quite clearly. And of course, all of our grids. Let's go ahead and select this rafter. We'll go up to the context ribbon and select copy. On the options bar, I'll enable multiple. And now I'm just going to simply use the grids here to allow me to copy this rafter down through the structure. Okay, if we go back to the 3D view, we can now see all of our rafters in place. Now, of course, some of these will need adjusting and editing. We can do that at a later date. But what I want to do now is extend the columns. So I'm going to press the modify button here to release the beam command. I'll then select all of my columns on our first grid, which was grid six. So there's all the columns selected in here. Notice on the context ribbon, I can attach top base. So I'm going to select attach top base. On the options bar, you'll notice that top is selected. And what I want to do here is cut the column. And indeed here for the attachment justification, you can see that I can set minimum intersection, maximum intersection or intersect column midline. In this case, I'm just gonna select minimum intersection and then select my rafter. And you can now see all the columns have now attached to that rafter. If that rafter changes level, then all of those columns would update. Now, of course, I can do a very similar thing in here. So we'll select these columns. Uh, incidentally, here I'm holding down a control key to have a multiple selection enabled. And then I can use an attach top base and select this rafter here. Again, I'll do a similar thing over here. So we'll select that column. We'll select these columns at the back here. And again, we'll attach top base. Okay, so we've got one more uh, line to do. So we'll select this one here. And again, these column positions, attach top base and select this rafter. Okay, so this is obviously where things start to change a little bit. Now to edit the steel work and be able to fix this uh, issue here, what I'm gonna do first is go back to a plane view. So on the tabs here, let's go ahead and switch back to our zero zero ground floor plane. I'll select this section. And now I can just simply drag the section across. And here I want to see what's going on on grid two. So notice here that's now elevating grid two. We'll now go into that section and I can now clearly see my rafter. All I need to do here is select the rafter. And of course here I can then use a grip just to pull this back. Uh, we will terminate that on the intersection of grid D. Notice again here, I can see that same reference plane. So of course, this is one of the very useful things of using reference planes. You can see it in any of those types of sections. Here, of course, I can go ahead and select all of the steel work now, and then go to attach top base, and then go ahead and select my rafter. Okay, so if we just go back into the 3D view, we can now see that rafter in place over here. And in fact, this rafter, we don't even require. So I can select this rafter here, and press delete. Okay, so there the rafters now complete. So here we want to take all of the core walls up to the roof level as well. So here I'll go to my ground floor plane. So here I just want all of the concrete walls selected. So I make a selection of all of the walls like this. Now, of course here, you can see that I've probably got shaft openings, uh, dimensions and other things in the selection set. If we come up to the context ribbon, I can select filter. Here, I'm going to say check none and just ensure here that I've got the walls selected. 
Now, of course, here you can see that we've got some block work in there as well. We now need to remove that block work. So I hold down the shift key and select the block work here. And you can see now I can actually remove all of those block work elements in there. And of course, now what I want to do is ensure that the top constraint is going to take this up to the roof level. Again, we can confirm that by going back to the 3D view. And we can now clearly see all of our steel work now is actually going through the core walls. We'll adjust that a bit later on when we start to look at some other framing. OK, so that concludes this lesson. And you can see here that we have a pretty simple method of creating our rafters. We simply create a section where we want that to go. We then make sure that we understand the grid or the reference plane that the steelwork is going to reside on. And then we set that as the reference plane. OK, let's ensure that you've saved your model. And that concludes this video.